But Mr. Golub, just a follow-up on that. Uh, the attack took place in Pennsylvania, which is a swing state. Uh, and it's, it swings between the Democrats and the Republicans. Given that the incident happened there, how do you, what's your assessment on that? Well, that's a little hard, to, you know, in terms of it, it could have happened anywhere. There are nuts all over the United States. There are nuts with guns all over the United States. That's the more salient fact. The fact that it happened in Pennsylvania is just a coincidence. It had nothing to do or nothing bad about the state of Pennsylvania. Now, how will it play out politically in terms of affecting uh, the vote, whether Trump gets the state? I would suspect that there's still four months until the election. The fact that this took place in Pennsylvania, I don't think will affect voters much one way or the other in the state in terms of whether it swings to Trump or Biden. But we'll see. Right. So now I want to see your ass assessment on that, considering that the attack took place in Pennsylvania. How do you see Pennsylvania weighed in uh, politically otherwise, given that it's a swing state? Yeah, Pennsylvania is, is, is a very important state. And that big crowd for President Biden was very noteworthy in a purple state. I do want to say back in 2020, however, uh, pre pre excuse me, President Trump also had a very big rally in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's important. That's why he went there. He's been going to these kind of leaning blue purple states. Uh, but, but also, you know, just to talk about, you know, what we talk political violence uh, here in the United States. I think a lot of uh, Trump supporters, on the other hand, who, you know, uh, are very weary of the mainstream media who have constantly compared him to Adolf Hitler, a fascist, uh, and calling him names like that for the past few years, even since 2016. Um, I think that trust in the mainstream media is going to extremely go lower among his supporters. They're going to say this is what we were talking about when you really have, quote unquote, Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, then eventually someone, now we don't know who did this shooting, but someone like this will come and ultimately act. So um, I think in that sense, uh, it's, you know, the violence uh coming from the left may also, you know, play uh, to the benefit of the former president and his supporters. Not that any of this is beneficial and it's a very unfortunate situation. Uh, but, you know, that's where we are in our political climate. And it'll be interesting to see how the media outlets who have constantly compared him to dictators and Hitler and fascism and all of that, how they're going to be covering the former president moving forward. Right. Just to let our viewers know, Trump has issued a statement right after the assassination attempt. He says, I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. Trump says, incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Well, this is the statement by the former U.S. President Donald Trump after the assassination attempt at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania. Coming to you, uh, Mr. Golub, how do you assess this statement by the former U.S. President who says that it's incredible that such an act can take place in the United States of America? Well, there are, it depends how he follows up on it. It is incredible if just taken literally uh, that, that something like this can happen. If he then exploits this, you know, which is a fear I have to say it's incredible and, there, and, and that somehow President Biden or the Democrats, Democrats or the woke people or whatever are to blame, then that ratchets up the tension and the anger and the hostility in the country uh, tremendously. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now in that he's simply using it as a straightforward statement of uh, this being a horrible event that took place. We'll see whether he exploits it. You have to, though, put a statement like this or consider the possibility of exploiting it in the context of how he's run his campaign and what he's been saying for years now. Donald Trump has been saying that the 2020 election was stolen from him, even though there's absolutely no proof of that. He's threatened to use the Department of Justice to go after political enemies, including Liz Cheney, a leading Republican who opposes him, saying that he wants her brought up before a military tribunal. So the notion that people and that the media is accusing him or pointing out, I should say, that he's made any number of statements almost on a daily basis that tend towards authoritarian tendencies, to put it mildly, 
is actually accurate. This is not the fantasy of anyone. This is really out there in his statements and actions. Right. Uh, Mr. Golub, uh, we did speak about the security apparatus there uh, regarding the former U.S. president. Just to follow up on that, will you call it a security and intelligence lapse? And who should take the onus for the attack on a former U.S. president that to at a campaign rally? Oh, I don't know. It's, it, I think it's way too early to assess it in that way. Uh, if, in fact, this shot came from hundreds of feet away or, or a very good distance away in a build on top of a building, uh, should that building have been secured? Perhaps. But it's, I really think it's too early to speculate uh, on something like that. The, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, another aspect of this is the fact that guns are just so easy to get in the U.S., including high-powered rifles that can take someone out from uh, hundreds of feet away or even hundreds of yards away. That's a separate issue regarding gun control. But that is part of the big picture of what's going on here, that a gun like this was probably easy to get, be it legally or illegally. But coming to you, Susan, Trump has just said that it, that it is incredible for such an attack to take place at a campaign rally. We were just talking about the security situation there uh, when an attack takes place at a campaign rally. Talk to us more about what kind of an impact will this attack have on the gun laws in the United States of America, which is liberal as of now. As far as I know, Pennsylvania doesn't have very liberal gun laws, and this rally was in Pennsylvania. So it differs from state to state. It's really too early to tell, and it's, I don't know if it would be appropriate for um, the direction of the conversation, either on the part of Donald Trump or Joe Biden as being the main contenders and candidates, or, or even the gun lobbies or those that oppose, um, you know, a, gun rights uh, to go in that direction at this point. I think um, they're going to be sticking to the main issues and and hopefully both camps will really turn down the temperature uh, of, uh, you know, this divisiveness, so to say. Uh, in terms of, you know, gun laws, again, when it's very close to the elections like this, uh, it's hard to imagine uh, that those that, you know, oppose gun rights to an extent or want more control would go all out and, and advocate for that because so many Americans are divided on, on this issue. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know how the conversation will go, but it's very hard to imagine that at least in the near future, that would really, you know, take center stage in the environment that we are right now.